All right, so today we're solving trig equations. We just did an example here of solving a quadratic equation. To refresh your memory, we're just solving for the variable x. Okay? So, uh, let me give you this one. 2 times the cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. We're going to solve for x. So what do you think? Add 1. We're trying to get x by itself, right? So add 1 to both sides. So 2 cosine of x equals 1. Divide by 2. So the cosine of x equals 1 half. And then you do inverse cosine. Inverse cosine both sides. Okay? So inverse cosine the left side. And inverse cosine the right side. What does that do to the left side? Takes out the cosine and gets x by itself, right? Okay. Now on the right side, the inverse cosine of a half. 60. 60, is that it? Okay. This is where I'm ho I was hoping to get some questions a little bit. 60 degrees is not a wrong answer. Okay. But I like the question, do you want radians, do you want degrees? You don't know, I didn't specify, right? I will ask for something specific on the test, okay? So if I said degrees, are you happy with just 60 degrees? Yes. Okay? If I said radians, are you happy with simply just pi over 3? Okay. Did I use a capital letter here? Did I want just a principal value? Is 60 degrees the only solution to this? No. No. 300 degrees works. What's the cosine of 300 degrees? One half times two. One. Minus one is zero. Okay? So 300 works as well, right? Okay, 60 degrees works, 300 works. We could keep going. There's lots of them. Okay. I will always specify what I want for solutions. Okay. You have to be able to identify what those solutions are based on the directions. That's why I didn't give you directions at first year. Okay. If I said solve for x, where x is between... 0 and 2 pi. What would I be looking for then? Kind of summarize what that means. I want all my answers to be in radians. And all answers one time around the circle, right? So I need every answer that is possible on that first time around the unit circle. Okay? If it were degrees, we've already said, what are the two? 60 and the other one I said was 300, okay? So if, if this said between 0 and 360 degrees, we know our answer would be 60 and 300. But I want them in radians, okay? So I'll even write down the degrees here first. But in radians, what would those be? Pi over 3, good. 5 pi over 3, yep, 5 pi over 3. Okay? So pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 would be your two solutions if I asked for your answers between 0 and 2 pi. If I asked for your answers between 0 and 360 degrees, these would be your solutions. So that's one possible way I'll ask for answers. Okay? Is I'll just give you an interval and I want all the answers that show up in that interval. Does that make sense? Tyler? I'm going to test. Uh, please just circle the ones that's asked for. Yeah. Yep. Don't, don't, don't write both because I want you to understand the directions and then answer it based on those directions. Okay. But, I mean, you can write both, but just circle the ones that I that we want. Okay. Because some people do like writing the degrees ones and then changing them to radians because they don't quite have those memorized, which is totally fine. Okay. All right. Any questions on that one? 
Are we good? Okay. Next one. Solve for principal values. Okay. And we'll go root 3 times the tangent of x plus 1 equals 0. Root 3 times the tangent of x plus 1 equals 0. Pretty easy solve. Again, what do you do? Subtract 1. Lord it out. That's fine. Divide by root 3. So both sides divide by root 3. Bring up the three. Yeah. Negative one over root three is actually the equivalent to what? Negative root three over three. And yeah, I didn't say radians or degrees. Let's just keep practicing with radians because I know you guys know degrees really well. Okay. Inverse tangent. Inverse tangent, both sides. Now, principal values, that's like using the capital letter now, okay? That's like telling you I want all my answers between either negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 or 0 and pi, depending on which inverse trig function you're using. So, principal values is like when you use a capital letter, okay? So, the inverse tangent of the tangent x equals the inverse tangent of negative root 3 over 3. That cancels and you just get x. What is the inverse tangent of negative root 3 over 3 only using principal values? Only using those restricted domains we've asked for the answers in. You're correct, but that's not in our domain. Negative pi over 6. Anytime you do inverse tangent, we want all answers between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Does everybody agree this would be a negative 30 degree angle? Or a 330 degree angle? Or 11 pi over 6? Those are all correct, but they're not in our principal values in radians. When we're doing principal values, for tangent, all answers are between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay? Why is it between those two? So, Remember when we were doing inverse, uh, like the ones on the test, you know, the capital letter, inverse cosine or inverse sine, that sort of thing. When you do inverse, let me even go this way. When you do inverse tangent on your calculator, there are an infinite number of potential solutions, right? But your calculator always only gives you one. The calculator gives you the principal value, basically the one closest to zero that is possible. And the reason we have those domains is for tangent and sine, we use all values from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 because those two quadrants would cover all the positive and negative possible answers. Because in the fourth quadrant, sine and tangent are negatives, and in the first quadrant, sine and tangent are positives. So if you give an answer that's in quadrant 4 or quadrant 1, you're, you're getting the answer that's closest to 0 as possible, plus positives and negatives are possible. Cosine, though, closest to zero in quadrants four and one, cosine's only positive. Yeah. So that's why for inverse cosine, we have to use all answers between zero and pi. All right? So is that ring bell on that? Okay. All right. So negative pi over six, right? And that would be it. That'd be the only answer you have to give me on that one. Okay? So that'd be solving for principal values. Uh, let's see. Most of yours today are going to be that simple. Let me give you one more that's a little bit tougher. It does involve some factoring, so that's kind of why I did that one at the beginning of class here today. And we'll even change the direction here. Solve for all possible values.
This one's tricky because you have multiple trig functions. You don't just have a sine x or a tangent x or a cosine x in here. Okay. We're going to factor on this one. We're going to pull out a greatest common factor. What do both terms have in common that you could pull out of each term? Cosine x. Cosine x. So if I take a cosine x out of both terms, what would be left? Sine x minus one half. Sine x minus one half. If you don't see that, distribute that cosine back through the parentheses. Don't we end up right back where we started? Yeah. Okay. So now I have something times something equals zero. Something times something equals zero. So what do I do with both factors? Zero. Set them equal to zero. Yep, good. Just like that quadratic one. So I'd say cosine of x equals zero. And I'd say sine x minus one half equals zero. Or in other words, sine x would equal one half, right? Okay. So when is the cosine of x equal to zero? If you would do inverse cosine of zero on your calculator, what answer would it give you in degrees? We'll, just, we'll use degrees 90. here on this one. 90? Okay. What are some other answers, though? 270. 270. So every time you get up here or at the bottom, right? So 90, 270, 450. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Um, 6.30, I think, okay, brain starting to hurt, okay, but anyway, there's a whole bunch of them, right? What you could do, would you agree that it hits 90, and then every other time it goes around the circle one more time and ends up straight up here, it's zero again, right? So what you could write is x equals 90 degrees plus 360k which basically means you're adding 360 degrees to 90 degrees over and over and over and over and over again. Why wouldn't you put 180? Now for this one, Caleb makes a very good point. Why couldn't you just put 180K? And for this one you could. Because the answers do repeat themselves every 180 degrees. There's a reason I'm going to show it to you this way because I don't want to confuse people. But on this one, absolutely, on this particular one here, you could say plus 180K because It'll hit at 90, and then 180 will hit again, then another 180 will hit again. And then that's all you'd have to write on this one. You wouldn't have to write the second one that I'm about ready to write. So you could write 90 plus 180K on this one. That's the same thing as what I'm, because now I'm, right now this only covers which answers? The ones where on the unit circle? Straight up. i got to still cover all the answers on the bottom one. So X could also equal what then? 270 plus 360K. Question, Derek. Um, for all principal values, wouldn't we just put 90 degrees plus 360k? Uh, no, for principal values, you only give me one. And that one would be pi over 2, or 90. Okay, if I said solve for all principal values, your answer would simply be pi over 2, or 90 degrees. That would be it. You don't need to. Even... This is a way that we can list all possible values. Okay, because obviously we don't want to make a list. That would yeah. Okay, what, what would you do if, like for this answer, would there be two answers for principal? For? It would just be pi over 2. For this one, or yeah, for, are you looking at this too then? Or no, I was looking at like for 90 and 270. 270 is not in our, for inverse cosine, when you do inverse cosine, I oh, only yeah. want answers from 0 to 180. Oh, yeah. So the only answer between 0 and 180 is pi over 2. Oh, yeah. Okay? Why k? Hey. L, M, N, whatever, okay? It's going to represent an integer, which I will write here at the bottom, but I was going to wait until I was done. Okay? How about when is sine equal to a half? And you'll see why I did two separate ones here on this one. When does sine equal a half? 30. When again? 150. 150. And then 210 would be negative, right? So 30, 150, and then not again until you get all the way around to that 30 again, or that 390. 
So you got 30, 150, 390, there's not a pattern there, right? You couldn't just say 30 plus 180K or anything like that. So that's why I like writing two of them because some people will get confused, but you would not be wrong and that was correct. You could definitely on this one say 90 degrees plus 180K, all right? So on this one, what am I going to say? X equals what? 30 degrees plus 360K because you can just keep going around in a circle. So here's 30 degrees right here, go around. 390, go around again, whatever, go around again, whatever, you know, those are all possible solutions. And then what would the other set of answers be? Good, 150 plus 360K, and all of this is where K is an integer. Basically means you're just adding 360 one time, or two times, or three times, or four times, or negative five times, or negative ten times. You can't add half of 360, because that obviously wouldn't get us back to a possible answer. Okay? So that'd be a way you could solve for all possible values. Okay? This one's starting to get a little more complicated, but you will get some definitely like this on, on your test where you do have to factor, okay? But most of the ones on your assignment today are, are not this yet, okay? Any questions on principal values or other ways to answer questions? The plus 360K or every answer between 0 and 2 pi one time around a circle. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, assignment. Pretty short. That's geometry. Page 459, page 459, I'm whopping five problems here, 5 through 7, 17 and 18, 5 through 7, 17 and 18. 